a four-year-old girl goes to school, draws a picture of her father, and uh, the teacher asks the, pic the little girl, what have you drawn there? And she goes, that's my daddy shooting burglars and monsters. Teacher takes the picture to the principal. They call Child Protective Services. Child Protective Services <laughs> calls the police. Father comes to the school to pick up his kids. It's taken to the principal's office where there's three police officers waiting for him, arrested, charged with possession of a firearm. Handcuffed, walked out of the school, Unreal. taken into the back of a car, and all the way to the police station where he strip searched. No weapon was ever found. Now, there's some question as to whether their house was searched. That hasn't been determined yet. It was, that? and it was searched. It was. They found a toy gun. And it wasn't robbers, it was bad guys. That's my daddy shooting bad guys and monsters. Did they sit, church, search the house for monsters? <laughs> now, you notice what, what's happening here. In this report, if you listen, they say, you know, this is absurd. Basically, let me translate media bullcrap to English. When did this happen? This isn't a mistake. How do I know? Listen to the superintendent as he responds the next day. This is um, a difficult situation for the family to be in. And we do work hand in hand Nick. with these families because we co-parent. So obviously, we um, Nick, what? we hope that uh, I'm sorry it, that we could uh, move what, forward. What was that? You, but it's it's understood the the stress that the family is going through. However, we uh -huh. did what was required of us to do, and there are other agencies involved mm -hmm. that are part of other of uh, the chain of of occurrences here. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sir. What did you mean by co-parent? I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> by co-parent, I'm talking about uh, teachers and mm -hmm. parents working together to support mm -hmm. uh, children as they, they grow up. And mm -hmm. so those relationships are important to us. No, no, no. Okay. You, you're, you're not the co-parent. No. You're the educator. You work okay. for the parent. You right. see what's happening here? Wow, is that something else? And, and you notice the language is there. So everybody in the agency... They know, but the stupid media people don't have any clue. I'm sorry, what I'm sorry, is co-parent? Co -parent? What is huh? that? I've never heard that. But he said it. He knew it. And he said other agencies are involved. We did exactly what the code requires us to do. When did this happen? When did to... this happen, Canada? When did this happen? It happened under your nose. We are either fortunate or unfortunate that it's happening now under our nose at a rapid pace. We're trying to catch up with the rest of the world. We were behind you guys. Now we're ahead of you guys, or, or catching up to you guys, and soon we'll be ahead of you guys. We may be ahead on the lack of freedom of speech real soon, real soon. And you don't notice it until it's too late. We need to look into whether that's written into Canadian law or code anywhere. If it's actually... Look up co-parent. Co-parent. Look up co-parent. That's... I that mean, is that's a staggering statement, mm -hmm. and for that not to be followed up on mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. I, I think is stunning and frightening. How can you not have a hundred reports on what this guy just said from Canadian television? Wait, you claimed it. Wait, okay, you claimed because yesterday to be co-parent because it's part of the system, because they have the same problems. You know what? I, I'm reading this book. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. I'm reading this book that uh, is really amazing. It is um, about America. It's uh, Charles Murray coming apart: the state of white America, 1960 to 2010. Isn't it a bestseller? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, coming it's, apart. It's it's truly America. Uh, truly amazing. The things that I'm learning. But one of the things that I'm I, I read last night is. That in the early 1960s, um, only 8%, 8% of our population had a college education. Eight. Now, there's two things that came to mind. One, look at the progress this oppressive system has, uh, has given. What, what, what is the number now? What is the college-educated number now? 50%? 60%? If you look at one of the, I'm trying to remember which one did it, um, but but people are saying now uh, the the uh, politicians are now saying we need to we need to elect more scientists. We need to have more scientists as politicians because they'll know how to fix everything. It's 
It's uh, Philip Drew, Administrator, that awful book from the turn of the century of Woodrow Wilson, Philip Drew, Administrator, where they're just going to administrate everything. Science knows. It is the elites that are the problem here. Our university systems have poisoned the well. And there's nothing wrong with education. In fact, quite the opposite. If you are ignorant, you're a slave. You need to have education. But what we've done at the same time is we have banished God from the square. So if you have education and you just start believing that you know all the answers and there is no God, or that you're silly and ridiculous for believing that there is a God, you become arrogant. And that's the problem. Even if there is no God, to believe there is something bigger than you and your worldly knowledge helps keep the cap and the lid on arrogance. What is the problem with our economy? Arrogance. We think it'll go on forever. Never. It never has. Never has. Never in the history of the world. Uh, success and things just didn't get continually get better and better and better and better and better and better over a long period of time, but not necessarily with the same people. They always destroy themselves. When do they destroy themselves? When they get arrogant. We were humble. Humble. There's two reasons why people didn't drive Mercedes and Bentleys and things like that back in the uh, 1960s. Because we could still afford them. There's two reasons. One, people thought it was ostentatious. Rich people thought, ah, you know, a Cadillac is fine. It's closer to the people. They thought it was. It was. They thought it was ostentatious, and it, and they didn't want to stick out like that. And they didn't. They didn't want that material wealth like that. They still had the ability to buy it. They didn't. Our houses weren't mansions back then. They had the ability to buy those mansions, but they didn't have twenty thousand square foot homes. Why? Because they were more. Our 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 forebears were more a nation of needs rather rather than wants. And what did the progressive Bernays say when he was putting all the advertising for all of this together? All I have to do is transform this country from a nation of needs to a nation of wants. Why are the people in Indiana happy today? Why are they smiling amidst the grand devast- devastation and despair? They're happy because they are connected with their needs and not their wants. They know what's important to them now. The Lord is strengthening us. These tornadoes is a way for us. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. He's strengthening us. This is a strange and hard to understand as a human, and I don't think I could understand it if I were in their situation, but it is a blessing. I don't know how, but it will turn out to be a blessing. It's not how you're seeing it. It's how they're seeing it, right? They are. The guys on the ground who are doing all the video stuff for us, you know, doing all the interviews and everything else. It'll be on GBTV tonight. Raj was just saying, they're looking at this and they're smiling. They're all smiling. It's amazing. It is. It's incredible. He's strengthening people. And we're going to need it. We're going to need it. Our our society, our, our way of life, our freedom of speech. Pray for people in the media who speak the truth. Pray for them, because they are coming under enormous pressure, um, and uh, only the strong will make it in the end. The strong and the smart will make it in the end. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Pray for members of the media. Pray for your friends and neighbors. Pray for yourself and your family, that you're strong enough to um, endure, and you're strong enough to not be afraid.